Welcome back to CGIU Stories. I'm joined by Kevin Fan, who comes to us from UC Irvine. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Um, so tell us a little bit about your commitment this year. My commitment is, is two 10-week courses run over the fall and spring quarters of the 2011 and 2012 school year. Okay. And what it is is that um, I'm working with uh, medical students, UC Irvine medical students, and what we're doing is that we're going to track, um, we're going to take the vital signs of homeless families at motels and what we're doing is that we're going to take their vitals on the first week and then after that we see how their baseline um, scores are and from that we make personal profiles of each one and then each week we cater health classes to the families so that by the end of the 10th week we hope that they're they have an improvement and then um, we, they help we um, they could be more independent of their health without really having to go to a doctor. That is so cool. Thanks. Um, <laughs> how did you learn about this? How did you get involved? Right, so it's a club on campus. It's called the Medical Initiative Against Homelessness. Okay. And that club um, works with a nonprofit organization. It's called Illumination Foundation. Uh -huh. And that Illumination Foundation, they what they do is that homeless families and adults, um, they apply to that um, nonprofit organization and the nonprofit organization, they um, house homeless families and adults um, throughout motels um, throughout Orange County. Okay. And um, in return, at, at, a, at a lower subsidized cost, and in return, um, those families, they're able to um, try to find a job that's stable, and eventually they can move out into an apartment. So in return, they have to take health classes or like classes in general with so, anything. So them taking, so sort of receiving a subsidized rate or right. living in these facilities is, it, they can't do that without having taken these classes. Right, like classes on ma like on money management, on stress management and stuff like that. So okay. what our club does is that we, we just concentrate on the health aspect of it to make sure That's that, yeah. Right, <laughs> and how long have you been doing it for? I've been done doing it for like the past year. Okay. Yeah. What have you found? Can you share any interesting stories? Oh have yeah, there been any oh yeah, absolutely. So, so actually, before I made this commitment to make it a full year, I ran a pilot one this fall quarter. Uh huh. And what we did it was like a shorter class, but we had the main ones we wanted to do. So we actually did track their vitals the first week. We had health health logs, mm -hmm. and then uh, we took them to um, the supermarket. And then you'll be I mean, it's it's surprising because the stuff I take for granted or the stuff that anyone takes for granted, it's like. They don't really know how to read so food it's, labels. It's so it's nutrition related. It a is lot of definitely okay. because most of the homeless people, um, you know, they have, they have a at risk, high risk for having diabetes, high blood pressure, right, high right. cholesterol, you know, all the different. So it's really catered to to whatever. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. <laughs> what happens when you have a more serious medical condition? Oh right, that's right. The best part of our our healthy living program is that. We have guest speakers that come in. Uh -huh. We have um, so in the fall we had um, Dr. Charles Vega, who is from the UCI Family Medicine, and he came in, and then he's able to um, talk just talk about you know personal issues with them. And then we also had a nutritionist that came in, and so it's very okay. yeah. We try to cover all of the as different our our um, our programs. Yeah. And in so, terms of sort of your measures of success, uh, clearly, I mean, having taken this baseline um, measurement of their vitals and then doing it again over the course of many weeks, yeah. do you notice um, really positive improvements? Yeah, because we always ask them every week, like, how are you changing? You know, how, how has this class, you know, helped you? How, uh -huh. how have your house, how has your diet changed? You know, all that stuff. It's really important for them to really learn what we have, what, we, what we're teaching them. So we always try to make our or class as interactive as possible. Mm -hmm. So during any presentation we give them, we always ask them, okay, so we're presenting you like healthy diet, you know, like so how many of you are on the wrong side of it? And then we're gonna try to get them to the other side. And so we always bring in healthy snacks every week so that they could actually learn to more shift their diet towards that end. And then we try to make it really cost effective too, mm -hmm. so that they don't have to um, really um, use think about money in an issue because right. that's it. They're at a disadvantage of that. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> what are the next steps? So, what do you need to sort of take this further? Um, what do you plan to do next? Right. So, um, our our biggest issue, I guess, is 
money, I mm -hmm. guess, because our what we try to do is that to have more residents that come at the motels who come to our healthy living program. Our incentives for them is to give them gym passes at the end. Mm. So the gym passes, you know, they cost at least thirty dollars a month, and they have initiation fee. Mm -hmm. So we have to get that covered. And if we have, you know, more than twenty residents, that's you know, it multiplies. And I have I plan on having that the healthy living program every. Um, two that runs two quarters, so it's so you're it looking up. for funding for those gym passes, right? Or for some sort yeah. of a pro donation, right? Perhaps. Right, okay, yeah. Uh, what else do you guys need? Uh, we would we would like to have different kinds of more di more variety of guest speakers, uh -huh. that'd be nice, yeah. So we're looking at, looking into that, and then so but right now, it's I mean, the game plan and the curriculum it's all set in stone, uh -huh. so. I guess the hard part of getting the commitment down and on its feet is the hardest part, I would say. And that's off and running, so oh, wow. it's nice. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> it sounds like a great model that people could learn from and yeah. maybe take to their own cities as right. well. Right, yeah. So at the networking dinner I had yesterday, I mean, I, w I want to talk about my commitment. And the one thing that, um, the nice thing that, you know, all the other, other people, have, all the students have told me is that how feasible it is. because. Yeah. There's homeless fam there's homeless people any anywhere you go, you know. Um, so the best thing the nice thing about it is that any pre med student like myself, we could go out and teach health classes to like anyone. Right, you could right. use this to, for anyone. It doesn't have to be the homeless families. Right. It doesn't have to be to homeless adults. It could be to anyone. So the feasibility is like anywhere right. and you just have to set your mind to it. And it's, and it's a mutual benefit as yeah, well. I yeah. mean, in addition to providing these health services, you're gaining something from it. I oh, absolutely. And, and the relationships you build must mean a lot. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because you, you gain um, um, this connection with these with these homeless families that I never think I would ever have. Because yeah. like each time, you know, sometimes I drive down the street and I see like a homeless person before I, I started getting involved into, into this. I didn't take it seriously until yeah. you now. Yeah. And now I, I have more appreciation right. for it. Humanizes. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. Well, that's terrific, and we'll look forward to hearing more about how this progresses and right. how it expands. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks.